So we're headed up to the Garnet ghost town, but I just stopped here to show you where the gold dredges have come through and just tore everything up. They leave these big piles of rocks behind. This is this is like years ago. See, there's now trees growing up right in the piles of dredgings. There's probably still a lot of gold in these dredgings. They miss a lot. But there's uh, mainly limestone through the area, but there's a fault running through here. And magma came up through the fault. And with the magma, it brought gold and silver and it interacted with the lime to make garnets, which is what this area is famous for. But uh, the, uh, we got to go up into the hills. Here's a little display. It talks about these dredges, how they would just dig and tear up the land. It's digging for gold, washed downstream from the mother load. The rock mounds you see here stretch two miles up Bear Creek as far as the electric bucket line dredge could go from 1939 to 1942. The Star Pointer Exploration Company unearthed 13,996 ounces of gold. They couldn't get that other four ounces and make it to 14,000. The dredge could dig 43 feet below water and remove 62 to 6,300 cubic yards of gravel per day at, at its peak. A day's digging produced $630 worth of gold. Didn't seem very profitable to tear up all the land like that. Of all these piles and piles of tailings from the dredge. There's a bird at first, but it's right over there. There's a chipmunk sitting on a rock. He's eating something. Let's turn around to this side. And right there. Chipmunk sitting on a rock. <laughs> Dueling chipmunks. <laughs> Big old rock for me. Trumper up in the hills. Hi, buddy. Hi, little bunny. through here somewhere there was a tiny little boom down that just lasted a year and it's gone now but there was a man named Shorty that lived in the boom town and uh, Shorty fell into the fire one night and burned his arm real bad and he went down to see the doc and the doc took him to the saloon put him full of whiskey and took his arm off amputated it they kept Shorty drunk all night on whiskey doc headed back into town with Shorty's arm he was gonna preserve it and then when he got to town, he didn't have the arm. He lost it somewhere along the way. So that's the tale of Shorty's arm. And uh, anyway, we're headed, still headed up to the ghost town. Right oh, we got two different ways to go. They both get there. Left looks like a better road. It says, the, it says the same thing. So I guess it don't matter which way. Well, this one's on my navigator, the other one's not, so I'm gonna do this one. 
It's getting a little steeper and rougher. We're at a place about halfway up the mountain. The sign's hard to read. It says, do not trespass private property. So, a log cabin. I'm just going to shoot from the road here. No bar here. But up in there is a log cabin. Maybe you can see it. In fact, I'm going to see the cabin back in there. Keep climbing up this road. Really getting up high. This road is right. There's a big. There you can see how steep that is. Right, keep going. This was left of some kind of mine. See on up the hill, they've got it all tore up. There was something like that over this hill, but it was so steep, the truck was slipping and sliding, and I didn't want to stop. It was so steep, so I went right by that one. But the ghost town's on up ahead. The remains of an old cabin. It's collapsed in. This is the Garnet Ghost Town, 1898. It was a booming gold camp with a thousand residents. The town included four stores, four hotels, three livery stables, two barber shops, a union hall, a school, a butcher shop, a candy shop, a doctor's office, an assay office, 13, 13 saloons. Um, the surrounding mountain was rich in gold-bearing quartz, so garlic grew rapidly until 1905 when many of the mines were abandoned. The 1910 census found only 150 residents. And uh, in 1912, a fire destroyed most of the commercial buildings. And uh, by the 1920s, Garnet was a ghost town.